Neonic Void Productions presents Welcome to your fever dream. I am your host, Zio. And I'm sitting in your corner, just chilling. You know, but yeah, I'm in your closet, chilling. You know, it's a little, it's a little room, it's a little crammed in here. You might want to go in there and clean it. Like, there's some skeletons up in this bit. Just trying to help a homie. Anyway, I'm joined by the peeps. Oh, sorry. We're in your closet, but we're recording Spookocalypse. So, hi, how are you? Coming to you live from your closet. Whose closet? Everybody's closet. If you open the closet, you'll find us in the corner somewhere. The clothes are very nice for reducing echo. I don't know what you're talking about. What clothes? Girl, do some, fold your clothes. It's like you've done laundry. It's like laundry day in here, but. You don't, hang, here for a minute. you don't hang your nice clothes. Girl, if you look to your left, right over here is a pile of clothes that, that someone just cleaned and just threw in here. Just because you threw it away in a closet somewhere doesn't mean it disappears. Your problems are still here. You can't run away from the K. The K will find you. Y'all are so helpful. Hi. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's also books in your closet. Wow. Assuming you have a shelf. I don't know how I don't know what to do with this. Do you not have a closet? I have a small no. closet. Like, you can't even walk in it. Housekeeper, take it away. I can't. I can't. Okay. I was in the closet for 20 some, 27 years of my life, and this closet is sad. Bitch, I don't know what to tell you. I was never in the closet, so... You mean, you mean no, <laughs> lucky you. Bitch, lucky you. <laughs> you want a cookie? You want a surprise? No, not really. Uh huh. Yeah, you're gonna get. I don't. You're gonna get. I don't know. You're gonna get. You're gonna get something. You're gonna get the lint in my pocket. How about that? Okay, makes a good fire starter. Burn this house down. <laughs> you can't do that. Half this state's on fire right now. Oh, let's start. Let's continue it then. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I mean, it's it a bit went- red, right? <laughs> It went through an ice age one year, and then now it's on fire this year. Yeah, pretty much. Have y'all not heard? <laughs> no. It's on. There's literally. I don't know where it's at because I found out about it today. If you're in say a Texas, somewhere in Texas, there's a fire that that's taken more area than like Lon- the the square area of London apparently in the past two days at the time of this recording. Jesus Christ! And I'm like, where? It's like thirty percent of Rhode Island. I'm like, wait, where in Texas? I'm tired of this state. Like, <laughs> like I love Texas. I think it's a beautiful tired. state, but I'm tired. Okay, where? I, I need to, because everywhere I'm looking, it's like, Texas fires. Where, though? Where, though, babes? They didn't even talk about it on the news this morning. I know, and it's been going on for the past 48 hours. Yeah, like, like, hey, um, KSAT? Um, Fox News, you know, the, the local station, you know, um, cover shit that actually matters. Like, where the fuck is this fire at? Canadian, Canadian, Texas. We have a Canada. We have a Canadian, Texas. That is in the, oh, that's the most northern part of the state. The Panhandle. Oh, oh shit. It's close to you, but <laughs> Oh no! No, it's not close to. Yeah, isn't he on the No, he? Bunyip is on over, over there, past Dallas and Fort Worth. Hang on, he's I'm on the up, other side. I'm gonna look up a map of Texas and see if I can find the region it's located at. This is right next to that little piece of land above, right next to Oklahoma. That's part of Oklahoma for some reason. A little stretch of land. I don't know. Anyway, God, what's this purple part called? Yeah, 
Eight thirty, I guess. Seven thirty. They're like color coded. I'm like, I want to know the actual name of the region, not numbers. It's fine. Gosh. Anyway. Um. <clears throat> Any hoosies? Sorry. Give you fuck. If you like this podcast, make sure you follow and rate us on whatever site you listen to your podcast. Share with your friends. New episodes get uploaded every Saturday. Links are down in the description for other podcasts that are part of the Neonic family. Follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Spookocalypse. That's at S-P-O-O-K-O-C-A-L-Y-P-S-E. We also have a YouTube if you're from YouTube. Hi, hello, welcome. If you look underneath the video at that little button that's next to our channel name, uh, you'll see the word subscribe. And if you're not subscribed, it'll light up. So why don't you you know hit that subscribe button it's i think it's really cool i'm gonna keep like i i love it i think it's great it's a cool little feature um you know ring that bell and tickle it punch it take it out to dinner whatever you want to do with that bell just make sure you know you interact with it you know what i mean um yeah. um drop down a comment uh tell us what your favorite part of the movie is um i definitely don't have one um <laughs> <laughs> or you know tell us about um a movie or anything spooky that you want us to talk about uh, we'll we'll definitely put it on our list uh make sure you check out i got i got freaking brain fart for a second make sure you check out our other shows on the channel <clears throat> we're gonna be doing some spooky shit here and mints are going to be on the pillow and today's flavored mint is, uh, oh God. Is there anything that's re relevant? Because if not, I could just say strawberry. Uh, I'm okay with strawberry. Yeah, yeah. strawberry. That was a flavor of my protein shake today. Also, for the whole Texas thing, it's I'm in the northeast, like the very tip. It's referred to as like the Piney Woods area. Yeah, you're north. Of, you're in the eastern part of the state. This is in the northern part of the state. Oh, okay. So, like, closer to like Wichita Falls area. Got it. Yeah, Am uh, Armadillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo is in the northwest side. It's it's right near Oklahoma. It's right Oklahoma's near Oklahoma. It's literally on the whole top part of Texas. It's that little stretch of land that extends out from the main state of Oklahoma. The little rectangle that sticks out. It's right there. So the, 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 it's called the Panhandle. I did say and, the Panhandle. And, thank you. I did. I did say it was in the Panhandle. But so the fire's in the Panhandle. Yes, it is. That's yeah. That's why I said. It's okay, so panhandle. I was talking about like where Bunyip was, not where the fire. Yeah, was. Bunyip's in the eastern. I said that too. It's in the eastern part of the state. That's what I was clarifying. Mm -hmm. Was like okay, so mm -hmm. closer to Wichita Falls, and then you're like, yeah, yeah, it's it's next to Amarillo, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm talking about Bunyip, not the fucking fires. Oh my god. In other words, I'm safe. Good. That's all I need to know. Unless there's a particularly strong wind that blows it towards the east. Oh, well, it's been windy all day today. So, the movie we're discussing today is Men. Men. Ugh. By A24. Because it's a twenty-four mm -hmm. month. All right. So first off, this was directed by Alex Garland, and it stars Jesse Buckley and Rory Kinnear. And it's it's a very small cast. It's really the only two people that stand out. Um, there's also hang on. There's also, I think it's Pepa Esidu as James, who is Harper's husband, who takes his own life. they have got Gail Rankin as Riley. Oh, yeah. Um, trigger warnings. 
Yeah, uh, this yeah. movie is a big trigger warning. The whole movie, the whole movie is trigger warnings for one reason or another. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, there's you know, uh, if you were ever in a an abusive relationship, that's a trigger. Uh-huh. Warning. Um, there's a, someone unaliving himself. That's a trigger warning. There is sexual yeah. assault. Um, mm-hmm. um, what else is there? There's a naked man. Yeah, there's a naked man. And that's also, that's always traumatizing. It's always traumatizing. No one wants to see that. <laughs> it's always traumatizing. <laughs> <clears throat> Also, this film was produced. The production company is DNA Films and it's distributed by Entertainment Film Distributors. And it was released May 20th of 2022 in the United States and on June 1st of the same year in the United Kingdom. And it grossed 11.2 million at the box office. I don't know how much it cost to make. Probably. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Let me look it up. <laughs> Budget. Uh, around. His other works, Ex Machina was around 15 mil and Annihilation was around 40. So this one might have been around like. Uh, people are predicting 7 to 10. Somewhere around there. Seven to ten mil. Oh, wait. Uh, I think I found it. 7.6 mil. Sorry. 7.6 mil was the budget for this movie. Where much the, where the most of that budget go? Probably in that scene. <laughs> Probably in that scene. God, there's one particular scene in here that's gonna scar you for life. Then if you're like me, you're gonna be like, how they do it though? Yeah, it's like, oh, that's so gross and disgusting. How did you do that? I yeah, want to know. Fascinating. Not because I want to re not because I want to take that and do something with it just out of like curiosity. And how much money should I throw at the actors to do that for them to be like, cool, let's do it. What? All right. Anyway, so, um, how will how be discussing this film? I'll mainly be going over the plot as usual, and then occasionally mention the times where she has flashbacks. Yeah. Because it, because it kind of starts with Harper, our main character, being really distraught, and then she witnesses her husband at the time falling from the top floor of their apartment, or I'm not sure where they're staying at. Like I guess it's a flat, because this takes place in England. Basically, he jumps off the building, and in slow motion, you see him fall, and, well, you can guess what happened next. But we cut to a more peaceful time, where Harper is just going out to a country house that she's rented. And she's greeted by this man, Jeffrey, and he gives her a tour of uh, a tour of the house. <coughs> Excuse me. And then after they're finished... He, um, Harper goes for a walk in the woods and it's a gorgeous countryside. Just so much trees and greenery. I, I, th- I thought it was Ireland at first, but then it's like, no, this is taking place in England. But, but anyway, it, it's gorgeous to look at. And she finds her way to this railway tunnel that's no longer in use. And she does this thing where she stands in the tunnel and just shouts and makes echoes. Because who hasn't done that? Right. And getting halfway through the tunnel, she does more shouting. And then there's some figure at the end that slowly stands up and turns to look at her. 
And if that's not unsettling enough, it starts running towards her. And she she leaves immediately like, oh no, I'm turning around. I'm going back to the house. As she should. Uh, yep. And she reaches this open field. And I think she gets temporarily lost. But she ends up in the open field and sees this big building. And she decides to take a picture of it with her phone. And she looks at the photograph and notices there's a naked man standing in the distance watching her. Like a weird pale potato looking dude. Yeah. But she eventually makes it back to her house. And the next day she does a video call with her friend Riley. And talks about the man that she ran into. At the same time. Like while she's talking, you see this naked man just showing up in the background, approaching her house. And finally, it makes it to the house, and it's trying to get in through the front door, noticing that it's slightly open. And Harper tries to shut it, but he manages to stick his hand through the letterbox. So Harper calls the police, and the man gets arrested. And one of the arresting officers resembles jo- Jeffrey, the guy we met earlier. In fact, a lot of characters in this movie start to resemble Jeffrey. But later, Harper visits a church, and she sees images of the Green Man and Sheila Nagig that are carved on a font. And we'll, we'll get into what those are a little later, but for the plot... Um, she goes, I think it's like, she has this moment where she screams in the church and the vicars in the distance noticing, like, what's up with that? I think this was because of her close encounter with the naked man stalking her and the police seemingly being like, oh, he seems harmless. He's not going to do anything wrong. He's just, he's just confused. Yeah, that's toxic. You know, considering that he did try to break in the house. Yeah. I don't I don't know if that's considered harmless. But uh, back to the church scene. She sees this boy outside who's wearing what I think is a Marilyn Monroe plastic mask. If anyone can confirm. Um, I'm not sure. I... It, it looks just... Like, the face and the blonde hair kind of looked like Marilyn Monroe, but it it was just like a mask right. he's wearing. Yeah. And then he's like, I want you to play hide-and-seek with me. What? No, I don't want to. He's like, no, I want you to play. Like, he gets aggressive with it. And then the vicar shows up. He's like, run along, boy. Because he's being annoying. And then um, Harper and the vicar discuss her late husband's death. And the Vicar words it weirdly. He's like, keeps implying that maybe she's partly responsible for his death. That's... She didn't let him apologize. Yeah, no. <laughs> and understandably, Harper's like, fuck off, and then just gets up and walks away. Period. And at this point, there is some flashbacks to the scene such as the aftermath of James jumping. Like that is a, like his hand was pierced on this spiked railing and it goes through his hand, almost splitting it in half and his leg. No, no, his foot gets twisted. It just, it looks horrible. There's also a scene where um, Harper is visibly upset and scared, and James like snatches the phone out from her, out from her hands, because she was texting someone. He's like, "Oh, oh, you're you're scared of me? Like, why did you have to hide this from me? Like, like it's very confrontational." And Harper talks like she wants to divorce James because of his behavior, and he gets so aggressive that he punches her and shoves her to the ground. And Harper has enough, and she kicks him out of the flat. But back to the present day, Harper goes to this local pub and she runs into Jeffrey again. 
And then we've all got some, and there's some patrons and the bartender who also resemble Jeffrey. And then this one of the policemen that sh- um, that arrested the naked man also shows up. And it's like, oh, by the way, we let that naked man go because he didn't seem like a threat. Um, what just happened? <clears throat> I don't know. It sounded like someone left and then came back. I don't know either. Yeah, it says Discord requests <laughs> us to reconnect. Maybe it was Craig. I don't know. Damn it, Craig. But yeah. Basically, upon finding out that the naked man is loose, clearly upsets Harper, so she leaves the bar and goes back to her place, her country house. So she contacts Riley, and she's like, "Um, okay, I'll drive to the village in the morning, and I can accompany you for the rest of the day. We'll have, like, a great last day, and then you can come home. I was like, okay, that sounds nice. But... Riley doesn't know where the address is, so Harper tries to text the address to Riley, like like a link to a map. And then her mobile phone her mobile phone keeps getting interrupted. Like the service isn't good. And I think when she finally gets the map through, like it sends a, t- a message back that says, I know where you are, you stupid bitch. Oh. Which is when I was like, is the signal being interfered with like someone else stalking her maybe he's like yeah i know where you are like it's not actually riley saying this it's just what harper's going through just hot mess this poor woman Uh so then harper sees the policeman outside and the lights are flickering and She's like, hey, what are you doing here? Is something wrong? And then the lights go dark and he just disappears. And then when the pub's patrons shows up to chase Harper and she retreats back into the house and she gets herself a knife. And then a window breaks in the kitchen and she thinks someone's breaking in. And then Jeffrey shows up and is like, Harper, what's going on? He's like, there's someone out there. He's like, I didn't see anyone out there. Well, someone broke the window. And then he goes to investigate in the kitchen, and it's just a crow who crashed through the window. Its wings don't work, and so he snaps its neck to put about to um, put it out of its misery. And then Jeffrey goes on to the garden to be like, I'm just going to assure you that everything's fine. There's no one out there. And the lights flicker again. And then Jeffrey isn't seen, but then the naked man shows up. And he chases Harper back into the house. And he reaches through that letterbox again and grabs Harper's hand. And I think the way it's done is like he's reaching out, almost like inviting, and then Harper gets close. And then he grabs her hand and then she's like, oh no, pulls out the knife and shoves it through the middle of his forearm. And as he's trying to retract his hand, it just splits the hand more and more. It's um, it's like Halloween ends. Yeah, exactly. It, it's very gruesome. So he does get his arm out, but then the knife falls. And it looks a little similar to the injury James sustained when he fell from the flat. And then, weirdly enough, the boy and the vicar appear inside the house one at a time. Like, the boy's like, you really hurt me, you know, and you, sh- and you see his hand. And then you start to realize, oh, this creature, this naked man, is many of these men that she's seen throughout the past few days. And so she locks the, like she goes into a different room, locks the boy out, and then the vicar shows up and he opens the door. And that's a weird scene. He attempts to um, assault her. And then she stabs him in the stomach and escapes the house. I keep getting like a weird 
clicky thing. Like I do push to talk and it doesn't sound the same as it usually does. I mean, I'm not hearing anything different. Okay. Um, I was just seeing if, I, I, was yeah, I, if I had any connection issues or if I was cutting in or out. No, you sound good. No, you're fine. It's me who freaking has the freaking cutting in and out for some reason. Yeah. Okay, now it's not making any noise when I click. The ooh? Uh, it might be a little confusing, for me at least. But towards the end of the film, because this film went kind of quick, despite its length, but while attempting to drive away, Harper accidentally runs over Jeffrey, and he like yanks Harper out of the car, and then he just gets in the car and drives off, comes back shortly later and is trying to crash into her. And then we cut but to, uh, excuse me. And then it's, well, it's the naked man again. And now he resembles the green man because he has all these leaves in his face. And he approaches Harper, and now his ankle is severely broken, which matches James' injury from earlier. And then we have the pivotal, gross scene of um, the naked man giving a live birth through... Yep. I'm going to call it the bunghole gina. Oh. He gives birth to the young boy, who in turn gives birth to the vicar, and then Jeffrey, and finally James, heavily mutilating their bodies. Yeah. Yeah, basically it's like, here's a live birth with close-ups and there's not even like the screaming of pain it's just weirdly silent it's so weird mm -hmm. but like i kind of dig it though <laughs> personally because the body horror the body horror is there <laughs> oh yes but the final birth is James and he sits on the sofa inside the house and Harper asks what does he want from her and James simply says that he wanted her love and then Riley arrives at the house in the morning and she follows the blood trail and the crash car noticing that something happened finds Harper and Harper just looks pleased to see that Riley is finally here And that is the main plot of the film. So to start with symbolism, <laughs> um, Zio, could you describe the Green Man and the Sheila Nagig for our audience? Okay, so the Green Man and the Sheila Nagig. Now these are two things that popped up throughout the film more so the green man than the Sheila Nagig, but you saw their faces in the church uh, the green man on one side of the statue and the Sheila Nagig on the other as well as the thing that was stalking her is a depiction of the green man as well as the thing that then gave birth like three times three or four times to all the men that have shown up in the movie leading up to the ex-husband. Um, so to go with, we'll start with the Sheila Nagy because she's the lesser known, um, lesser seen one because she's represented in the movie by the other side of that statue in the church, as well as the, um, I'm assuming they pulled a reference from her from the whole giving the birth of these men giving birth to each other at the very end in that hellish sequence. I can never understand why he would choose the back vagina, but here we are. And, if, and you may be listening, viewers, what is he talking about? We're not about to explain in grave detail in that scene. You're going to have to experience it for yourself because we all did. And some of us experienced that in theaters. 
<laughs> on a big screen. A word. It was the oh, worst experience of my life. Uh, again, I was so uncomfortable, but I loved it because the body horror was there. And I'm like, how did he? I need to ask the director, how did he do it? Because I need to know. Because it was gross. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Sheila McGee is a um, carvings that depict a naked woman displaying her. Um, vulva usually it depicts of like statues of like of a female figure either kind of oh god how do i describe it without getting too graphic i don't know how to describe it without getting really too graphic she's she's uh she's holding open her um her vagina uh she's like she's just like she's displaying it but it's it's weird on how if it's weird, but she's displaying her vulva. And in Europe, throughout Europe, you see these on cathedrals, castles, and other buildings. Now, this goes back all the way to the 12th century. Um, they say that the, that the imagery started potentially in France or Spain in the 11th century and then traveled itself up to Ireland and in, in Britain uh, in the 12th century. Now, the origins of this uh, figure is, is debated. Uh, some say that it might have been used as a way to ward off demons and evil spirits, um, which so it has like a correlation to like early, early like gargoyles and like the pre gargoyle that they used. There's also other theories that it might have been a old fertility goddess from an old pagan religion before uh, Christianity got into um, Europe or flooding throughout Europe. Um, there's also a theory that they utilize these figures as a representation of the lust and sinful nature of um, the female. Uh, I'm assuming that goes back to the birth of the original sin with the Adam and Eve story. Um, my theory is probably a combination. Honestly, I think it's a co probably a combination of a old pagan deity as well as the, these images were repurposed as like, ah, oh, sin, lustful sin. Oh. Because old Christians like to do that in old medieval times. So make you feel bad for having body parts. Um, but that's the uh, Sheila Nagig. Then you got the green man with the green man. So yeah, the Sheila Nagig is apparently might have been like an old pagan deity for fertility. The green man's the same thing. The green man is the, an old pagan deity that was repurposed. That was also um, brought into churches and other buildings of that nature. It's a, a pagan god that people are pretty sure has correlations to rebirth and resurrection. Um, it's a common. You you apparently you can go to England and find a bunch of inns and pubs that are called the Green Man. I don't know if that's true. I don't live in England, so if you're in England, if you're in England, send us an email. Tell us if that's true or not. Um, but he's a figure that represents spring fertility, rebirth, resurrection. So the fact that he fits that he's seen in churches is very similar. I mean, resurrection, rebirth is a big theme in Christian, uh, stories. So it's not surprising that they repurpose an old pagan god for the to symbolize that purpose because they had a tendency to do that a lot um, throughout Europe when they took pagans and made them into Christians. They took a little bits and pieces of the religion and applied it to the Christian faith to draw them in. So I would not be surprised that the Green Man was a result of that, as well as uh, Sheila Nagig. Um, but Sheila Nagig is a lot more unknown as far as the origins compared to the Green Man because there's um, people are pretty sure where the Green Man's from as far as 
chilling. The female counterpart of that is more unknown in that sense and how they correlate to the film. Of course, chilling a gig, fertility, the um, essence of some birth and the green man as the actual figure that followed her around and then gave birth at the very end to all the men in her, in her life. Um, again, rebirth resurrection. So they both kind of play a role in that. Cause they, and they, the director slash writer took obviously the idea of both of them and kind of mixed it into one thing that represents pieces of both. Uh, I would think more so the green man than the Sheila, but nonetheless, um, obviously he used the green man to depict more of how toxicity of men, at least in her life. Um, because that's basically what the movie's about is that what that this that her ex lover um is a piece of shit and kind of just haunts her in a way. And they use the green man and the Sheila Nagig as a tool to represent that. Uh housekeeper, any thoughts on that? Anything to add? I mean, I th- I feel like you're pretty spot on. Um, I mean, with the scene with the rebirth and everything like that, I believe that it. And I'm not saying that I believe that this like I believe the saying itself like, but I believe that the the message that they were putting out there, like with the rebirth and the rebirth and the rebirth, was that like. It, um that all like all men are the same that's what's painted in her eyes is that all men are the same all men are trash you know um which whenever you come out of a, a an abusive relationship like that it does alter the way you see the world and the way that you interact with a lot of people um so I mean I could vouch for that in in a in a way like cuz I'm going to get too much into it but like I I was in kind of a similar situation um except I don't see it as um all men are trash but there is um a certain aspect of of like um a personality I would say it's a type of personality um where if I, well it's not it's and it's stupid because I shouldn't think of it like this, but um, it's a certain zodiac sign, and um, if I learn about that zodiac, like like if you are that zodiac sign, I kind of like before I even get to know you anyway, like I already have a bad um bias towards you. Now, if I know if I get to know who you are before the zodiac sign, then I'm like, oh okay, whatever. But like it does being in a relationship like that does alter your brain chemistry so i can understand where she's coming from when it comes to viewing all men as trash and to be fair all the men in this movie treated her like trash yeah so like even like the kid like he was a piece of shit like (laughs) so i get it and it's not just done. In, no, it's not just done in overt ways. Like I don't like you because you're a woman. It's also done in subversive or covert ways. Like um, when they captured the naked man for stalking, it's like, oh, he'll be fine. He's harmless. They didn't like check in with her very much to be like, hey, how threatening was this person? It's like, well, he did try to break into her house, and they're like, nah, he's just he's just interested. Give him a chance. Like, no. Yeah. To to be fair though, like women usually have that kind of issue though. Yeah. Where like they will report that they feel unsafe because of this person and they're like, "Oh, well they have no previous charges. He's fine." And they're like, "You're just you're just overthinking it." Like they mm-hmm. make like they gaslight they gaslight the women into like being like, "No, 
he's not that bad. Like you're just overthinking it. And like women are usually like, uh, no, um, I don't fucking feel safe. As somebody who did a true crime podcast for a hot minute, that is a reoccurring theme. <laughs> that is a reoccurring theme. So I don't know why people of authority, the police or otherwise keep doing that when that's obviously don't, early don't, signs. Yeah. It's just like, they don't take women's like word. They're just like, exactly. whatever. Like you're just being crazy. She's probably on her period. No bitch. Like, I don't fucking feel safe. There's obviously something going on. You know, like their feelings are getting trivialized. Like, uh, like, like you said, they're just overreacting, right? Yeah, because, you know, she's a woman, so. And the fact that this movie was written and directed by a man Bless really kind of paints an interesting picture as well. You kind of think about it. I want to obviously know this person sees that sees that as an issue. I want to know what their inspiration was. Like, do they know right? someone who kind of like has dealt with these common issues? You know, I mean, as a as a man who was raised by a bunch of women, I, I would see that all the time. Yeah. If you're single, especially if like you're a single mother and you try to do something like business wise, they expect you to have your husband there or your father there. And we're yeah, in 2024. Like is the man of the house here? No, bitch, it's just me. Exactly. Oh. I don't like it whenever like they talk. Um like they're like, "Oh, well you won't understand what I'm talking about cuz you're a woman." And I'm all like, "Exactly." I was like, "Do you think I'm fucking retarded?" <laughs> like, do you think I can't understand a, a a concept that you're trying to portray? Um newsflash dude um i'm i'm educated i i can i'm a smart person i'm pretty sure i can pick up what you're putting down but well, my yeah. guess is that this person uh i'm trying to look up to see if this person was raised by a single mom or like yeah both nothing's giving any ink and like no nothing's giving any direction to see if he's I mean, I would say obviously he's has people in his life, women that I, deal with this. I wonder obviously. if maybe we could try and get an interview with with this person. That would be girl, a good feat, but that'd be fucking amazing if we could get an interview and be like, "What inspired you to make this film?" And like, like, no, oh, you know, like that's that's like one of my biggest questions that I have is like, what inspired you? To make this film, yeah, that I know might I said be like I don't have like my favorite parts, but like, bro, like, I think it's because like this movie, like if I, I know I said like bodies, bodies, bodies has has stuff in it that's triggering, but this one was extremely triggering for me just because of like I was in a very abusive relationship, like an extremely abusive relationship, to where it was borderline physical, you know, so like. Now, we saw this in theaters. I didn't know anything about this. Otherwise, I would have gave Housekeeper a warning on yeah. that. I felt so bad because I, I had no idea this movie was about all that. Like, Personally. not only that, but then, like, but then, like, what the husband did as well. Yeah. Like, that's also triggering for me. I'm not going to get into the reason why for me, but that part is also triggering for me like and i'm not gonna like i didn't like run out of the fucking like theater and like like i need a safe place ooh, like freak out like i was just like oh ooh. uh i don't like this is making me relive some memories i don't want to i still watched the movie and i enjoyed it and the body horror um don't ever do that again <laughs> respectfully Correct. um it was fantastic but uh i don't ever want to see that again that movie made me straight uh <laughs> that scene in particular made me scared of coochies um so thanks for that uh <laughs> it's a joke it's a joke i'm still uh the part of the lgbt qua you know yeah. um but yeah, no, this movie, this movie can be a lot. It, it, it does, it's a heavy hitter for the message yeah. that it sends anyway. 
Yeah, I remember when this movie came out, people were like, oh, this is man hating. And I'm like, are you that, upset because it's calling you out, bestie? That are you are you doing that because a man because a man's calling y'all out on y'all's bullshit? It's like, I'm sorry, Bessie. Do you feel triggered? Right. Do you have the same time? Do you act the same way as these men do? Oh, no. Maybe you should think about that. Exactly. Because men that act like that are are not good for women and or other men. Then they make the, Then they make other men look bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sorry, a society that's ran by men like that, it's not beneficial to anybody, including men. Toxic, toxic masculinity is terrible for everybody. Read Because people, because men are toxic to other men for no goddamn reason. So it's like, it's not because people turn it, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a women hating men crime. No, it's men should be shitty to women and other men. Girl, are you good? I like how this became just like a societal uh discussion. This movie makes you fucking like have debates. Exactly. Great movie though. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Pretty of course, this guy is also the one who did Ex Machina and um Annihilation, which two of my favorite movies from Two my two other good movies from one's from May twenty four and the other one, Annihilation's from like Netflix or Paramount. Don't hate me. I haven't watched either one of those movies. Oh well, we'll watch Annihilation at some point because that is a kind of horror Got film. It. It's a sci fi horror film. It's a love. It's kind of a Lovecraftian style horror. And then Ex Machina is just a sci fi drama. I don't know Bunyip here wants to do an episode on Ex Machina. So we might have a month where we just do movies that are non-horror, because I think that'd be fun. Non-horror on Spookocalypse? Yeah, just have a month of doing good movies, good genre movies that are not horror. We need a break. Because <laughs> girl, it's a lot I hear, girl. But I, I'm, d- I'm down for doing that someday. We run out well, of ideas. Give us a, a clear our palette. Yeah, it'll <laughs> I'll clear, clear the palette. <laughs> but getting into the rating system, one out of five green men. Crows. <laughs> I could have said three. I could have said one out of five back vaginas. I, you know, I was thinking that you were going to say vaginas, but I was like, please don't. Like, in my head, I was like, please, I don't want him to say vaginas. <laughs> but no, it's one out of five green men. Okay. Um, I shall go first. Uh, I will give this film a 3.5 out of 5. Okay. Because initially watching it in theaters, it's like, oh, 3 out of 5. But re-watching it again, because I haven't watched it since theatrical release. And I'm like, you know what? This film is the film is pretty good. It's it's on the weirder side of things and the the lore is real deep because it doesn't tell you right off it doesn't tell you what those things are. You have to go deep diving on your own goddamn time, aka me. I had to do that. It's not as bad as lame homework. though. Not yeah. freaking lamb. Don't even talk it's not, about it's not even it's not as bad as lamb because lamb, yeah. I that's homework I have it. I I can't solve. So this one was a little bit of a di- little bit of digging, but not terrible. Um, and the body horror at the end was just—it was good. It was gross. It was not gross in the sense of oh, live bird, but gross in the sense of like, what is this? What's happening here? And I still want to know—is it CGI or is it prosthetic? I think it's prosthetic. I think it's. I think it's literal literal physical effects but i'm like how'd you do it that's why i would ask him how would you, how'd you do it like uh s- girl so yeah 3.5 out of 5 green man i will also give it a 3.5 
mainly, I know I, I have a hard time like giving proper critiques to movies. Like it could have done this better, but I think I mainly base it off of how intense of feelings I get from this film. Definitely, the live birthing scene was the most intense feeling. Just like, wow, that is gnarly, but it's so cool. But I also wanted to. I guess I wanted to see the symbolism more. Like I only noticed the green man in the, in the she Linda gig part and the tie in with the body injuries tied in with them. Um, James's in just injuries when you find him, mm -hmm. but it didn't seem to stand out a whole lot. Like I didn't notice much with cinematography or with the soundtrack. I did like it better than bodies, bodies, bodies. And I do think it is a good movie to, watch in concerns with like addressing toxic masculinity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. housekeeper i was just waiting i don't know if he was like pausing or not i didn't, oh. <laughs> I didn't <want> to interrupt. <laughs> it's okay i was like i didn't have much to say about this film and y'all both said a whole lot. I'm like, I can't really add to this. So I'll just say the little things that I have, and then I'm going to let Housekeeper finish it off. Ooh, sorry. Ooh. Um, You know what? It's just going to be an all around uh, 3.5. Uh, I, I didn't, like, even though it was, you know, uh, a rough, I still enjoyed the movie. It was pretty good. Um, the back vagina. The, the back vagina. Yeah, the back like i swear like I, I i we walked out of there like what the fuck did you just make me watch <laughs> Zio, what the fuck did you make me watch? just body parts in places you don't either expect them to be or want them to be they shouldn't be <laughs> they shouldn't be they shouldn't be there there should be no one that I mean, has like the butt made sense and the mouth made sense but the area between your shoulder blades no uh no. you should not belong there um, no it should not uh but it, it happened it was there <laughs> it was the, it, yeah <laughs> you're right it was there um, he said it's gonna be here today yeah you made that choice and we we're like no <laughs> please don't um yeah i mean would i go out of my way to watch it again probably not but you know, if someone puts it on, like uh, I'll watch it with them. But it's not one of those that I'll open. The it's still a good movie. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm not hating on it. There, like I don't see anything. Like it was really well, like executed. But not one that I will openly try to watch again. It's like see no evil. One and done. <laughs> oh, say no evil. Say no, say no oh my evil. God. Speak no say, evil. Well, but say, look, listen, that one drew emotion, like an emotional response that I wasn't expecting. And I refused to watch that movie again. Yeah. That movie was fantastic. It was w extremely well done. And I feel the same way about this one. But I wouldn't mind watching this again. But I won't go uh, out of my way to watch it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But if someone puts on speak no evil, you're out. Yeah, I'm walking out. Be like, nope. We gotta out. see the we gotta see the English remake of it. I'm not, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it again. Um, the message was well received. It's still in my head to this day. Like th this is a movie that I think about more often than I want to. Yeah. You know what I like? <laughs> yeah. So uh which we have an episode on that one. Go watch it or listen to it, whatever. Um, yeah, that one, Wolf. Um, but anyway, yeah, I also give it a three point five. So it is unanimous. Three point five. I'll agree. Litty titty. Men, being three point five. Now that should be on Showtime on Paramount currently. Uh, it might end up being on Max or Netflix at some point. So, no, Max may deal with A24 to have their films on there. So, it's on one of them if you don't find it on Showtime by the time this comes out. Uh, yeah. 
So that is today's episode. Catch us next week. So until then, bye. Bye. Goodbye.